Dino My Piano are famous for pushing the Fender Rhodes sound to even more extreme zones. And one key tool they did to achieve this was come up with a preamp. And this is designed to isolate certain frequencies and characteristics of the Fender Rhodes tone and make them shine even more brightly. I've been on the lookout for an original preamp for as long as I've kind of known about them. And they don't come up very often. And when they do, they can be very expensive. But thankfully, the electric piano community does share a lot of information. And there are a few schematics on the internet for this preamp. So my goal in this video is to recreate that. And I've put together a list of different schematics that are available online in the description. I've compared each of these schematics and they all seem very similar. So I'd be interested to know if this is actually reminiscent of what the real schematic is like. And I'm curious to know if the design changed over the years, but that's a different story. I've transported this schematic into VeroBoard as this is what I prefer to make stuff on especially just for like a one-off prototype. So my plan in this video was to, was to show a step-by-step -step of me building up this board and giving it a go. But like any electric project, there will be mistakes made and there's a certain element of fault finding. And early on I actually misplaced one of the jumper wires and I use that as a reference for other components and it gets corrected at the end. So I would say if you are following along, make sure you'd follow not what's in the video. Also, I take no responsibility. Electric pianos, sound cards, anything sound related is expensive. If you make your own, make sure you know what you're doing. You could damage anything that this comes in contact with. So the first step as always is break the traces and I'm just going to use a drill bit with a couple of twists and that does it quite nicely. And I'm going to add some jumper wires and these short ones are just legs that I've cut off from previous projects such as LEDs and resistors. I try to get some close up shots of soldering and if you've not tried this, it really isn't that hard but I probably wouldn't pick this project as your first one to try and learn on. I'll be honest, I have made this circuit before and the first time it didn't really work and it does take a bit of patience, a bit of thinking about, but I start with the cheapest components first. So we'll start with some resistors and just work our way up as they get bigger and more expensive. So if I do have an error or I do decide that it's best for me to start again, it's really easy and it's not going to cost too much other than time. One thing to note is that I'm only going to use approximate values. So in some of these schematics, it's got quite unique or special values of components in. And usually components have like a wide range of tolerances on them. So I'm just going to use what falls into a 10% range. So for example, a 330k ohm resistor or a 300k resistor. Uh, to me, that's interchangeable. But that's because I'm not creating a dyno on my piano preamp. I don't understand what's sensitive in that circuit. I don't understand what's important. And only the people that actually made the original will know that. We might do some analysis in the future where we run a spice on this and break down what components are sensitive and what it's actually doing to the frequency response. But that's for the future. So next we're going to add some capacitors. These are getting bigger and it's starting to get a little bit more cramped, but we're getting there. I do find these type of projects quite therapeutic. Taking some basic components that are easy to understand and then building an entire system that does something quite magical. And especially if it works first time, it's an absolute dream. So we've got a couple of diodes and then some transistor JFETs and then finally some potentiometers. I've designed a case in FreeCAD so we can 3D print this. It kind of looks retro-ish. Now plastic isn't the best for a case as it's going to let a little bit of noise in, but it's cheap and we can quickly print it. To tie in with the design of the fender rods, I've got some extruded aluminium and then we just drill some holes in there and stick the tensiometers through and a couple of labels on the bottom so I know what this is if I come back to it a year or two and then we can get to see what this sounds like. So I think we've made enough progress today in this video that I'm going to save the actual testing until next time. So tune in soon and we'll post that. But this is getting quite exciting, isn't it? Do you think this will be enough to create the dyno on my piano sound? Do you think we need to do a lot more? Once more, if you do have any information, please do share it. And also, if you can, support the Facebook page. But yeah, that's it today. See you next time.